What's up guys, it's me your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and welcome back to our in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. So, today we start episode 30. It's kind of crazy, we're 30 episodes deep into this series. I'm having a blast, and I hope you guys are too. So, here's what we're going to do today. Here's our battle plan. We are going to push into southwestern Lyernia of the Lakes. We're going to try to cover this big strip right here, going all the way to the Erd Tree, and well, the minor Erd Tree anyway. And what we're going to try to do in this episode is we are going to push into the Alpenark Village, and we're going to find a familiar, a familiar NPC, we'll fight a boss, and uh, this should also activate an interesting event at the Round Table Hold with a specific NPC that I've been giving a lot of shit lately since the start of this playthrough, to be honest. I want to point out an anomaly that just occurred to me. So you notice we ran all the way to this death trap on foot. We didn't touch any graces or anything like that. We just picked up some useful items on the way. But we started all the way over here at the magma worm. And we took the secret lift up that doesn't require the dectus medallion because the dectus lift is right here. But we took the secret lift it brought us up here into the Altus Plateau, and we hauled all the way on foot across the plateau to the sealed tunnel so we could get that bell bearing, which was totally worth it because I was able to do some farming off screen, and I was able to get enough runes to pretty much upgrade all my equipment to where it's maxed out, except for the shield, which is fine. But the anomaly I want to point out is activating any grace there would have changed our playthrough a lot. We would have changed some events with uh, Corin the guy that does the incantations for us here at the round table hold and we also would have gotten the loathsome dung eater as well at the round table hold that door would be open and his quest would begin but apparently not if you take a teleporter because if you recall the divine bridge grace is what we took a teleporter to to get to the big giant stone golem boss fight i did kill him off screen just for the runes which I figured you guys would be alright with that because he's just a stone golem. He doesn't do anything special, he's no different. But we still do not have any additional dialogue from Corin. And if I run around the corner, I will show you here. That door back there, beyond the the maiden husk, is still closed. So we don't have access to the loathsome dung eater yet. So I guess that just goes to show that if you were to rest at any site of grace after taking that lift, you can uh you can expect your playthrough to change, but not this one, because I warped here, I sat at this grace, and killed the stone golem here, and it still somehow didn't activate any of that stuff. But I know if I sat at any of these other ones, it would have. So that's interesting to note. So, without dallying any further, let's go to the foot of the four belfries. And I believe that the belfries are probably going to be... The only bit of Lyernia that we're not going to be able to cover during our stay here. We're actually going to have to do additional things to unlock some of that stuff. Uh, we're going to have to go get those special stone sword keys. So, yeah, honestly, that's the plan here. We're just going to keep pushing this way all the way to the Erd Tree, and it's going to take us down to the Albanark Village, and uh, there's going to be some more kind of annoying, difficult areas. Yuck, 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 and more yuck. Do you hear that? I believe they're guarding an item, though, so we probably need to murder them. And we have an Everjail right here that we're going to smash in just a second. But, um, to finish my thought before we fight these assholes, we are going to push all the way that way towards the Erd Tree, and then we're going to get to the Albanark Village. We cannot get up here though so that isn't going to come until way later we're actually going to have to go very very far down in order to take a lift that will get us up to that uh i believe it's called the lunar cathedral or moonlight cathedral something like that and the albanark village is just past these ruins over here uh near the erd tree and we'll see gideon's adopted daughter we will fight a boss, and we're going to trigger an event at the round table hold. Alright, where is the singing fucker? There they are. 
All right. Oh, no. We are running low on butterflies. But you know what I'm not running low on? Hatred for these bats. They have no poise, so we can honestly kill them very easily by twirling our stick of doom. Shit! <laughs> I say that, and then I get waxed. All right. Come on, Torrent. Yes, iframes. Thank you. And we are overdue for a tier, I would say. See, a couple hits is all it'll take, but the problem is we have to hit them first. And I need butterflies. Really bad. Why are my little dudes unequipped? That's not like me at all. All right, here we go. Firebombs. Don't let it fly. There we go. See, we have the upper hand once we get the stick twirling. The problem is, we gotta hit them first. Notice how it totally canceled that grab, too, which was nice. Yeah. Where is it? Is it a rune item? Thank you. And then, what do you know? We got some arteria leave. I'll take it. Okay, let's go destroy this Everjail boss real quick. Okay, the Cuckoo's Everjail. So this should be a giant. I'm almost 100% certain that this is going to be a giant. So, yeah, let's get it. All we should have to do is bubble up, and then we should be fine. Charge attack his legs, knock him down, and we'll be good. I am going to get some black flame ready, though, because that will be super useful for this fight. I don't think we can break his poise with Bestial Sling, but I want to try. I want to experiment. Oh, it worked! That's amazing! <laughs> nice. Nope. All right. So that was just a... Shit. Nope. So that was just a regular, like, running strong attack. That was pretty cool. So jump attack. Okay, that does quite a bit. I bet you we'll get another guard break if we keep this up. That's it. Come on over. Nope. You're not getting through this shield. This guy doesn't hit very hard. Uh, he's doing the... Oh, I think we got a bleed on him. Okay, that worked out nice. And then you get the Great Blade Phalanx, which is the exact Asha Boar that you see him using. It's just like a super like greatsword version of Glenstone Phalanx. All right, so that was relatively easy. Now we're gonna head this way. There are octopi over here, and I am fairly certain that, let's check this small island here just to make sure we're not overlooking anything. Ha ha, we are. No. Oh, you dick. All right, fine. There we go. I didn't even need that extra one. Okay, perfect. So, the dragon here. I want to handle this guy real quick, specifically because handling him, we will be able to get ourselves the key to get into Rey Lucaria. And that is where we're going to go once we're done. All right. Let me get that bleed, huh? So, this guy, he is exactly like Aguil. He is copy and paste. 
The only difference is, is the type of damage that he does. And he also kind of looks blind. Like, I don't know what the deal is with that. I don't know why a glintstone dragon would be blind versus a fire-breathing one. But, yeah, Torrent just tanked that. That was pretty cool. That's it. Yeah. It's probably going to take me a second to get a bleed on this guy, but that's okay. You want to do some magic? Good. Oh my goodness, that fucking damage. <laughs> yeah, you going to come at me? Nice try. Thank you for killing that thing. Sorry for your eyeball. It has to be done. I'm sorry. I don't know about great enemy. He was just okay. Got ourselves a dragon heart. A new draconic power at the Dragon Communion Church. And that draconic power that we unlocked is going to be exactly what he does. It's going to be like the glintstone breath. Got some kukri. And then right here, this folk here happens to be a Rhea Lucaria sorcerer. So it makes sense that we would pick up the Academy Glintstone Key, which is a super duper important item. Now you can go back to, um, what's his name? Oh, I can't remember the guy that was begging for a dollar. You know who I'm talking about. Um, that guy. And then here we have a, we have a stone golem or stone sword key spot that I want to go into. Um, his name slips my mind. I made fun of it because it's got a silent letter in it and I was a complete asshole about it. Um, like an H maybe? I don't care that you escaped. Alright, let's go down in here. The Academy Crystal Cave. So this is a real short one. We're going to cover this one pretty fast. We should still make it back to the Erd Tree. Even while doing this. Rats. Lots of rats. So let's do this, shall we? Let's do this. Because we have so damn many of them. Let's make 15 of them. That should be plenty, because honestly, it's going to serve as just a pulling item. That's all we need it for at the moment. And we're probably going to pick up even more of them in here, because this is a crystal cave. And it takes a third of their health away. That's awesome. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's more cracked crystal in here. Is that moss? Okay, it's crystal cave moss. Never mind. Still good, but... Oh, come on. Questionable reach, unfortunately. Come over here. It was me. I was the one that did it. Are you serious? Come here. Wow, that did even more. Oh, wow. Yep, that's hitting pretty hard. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna watch around every corner. You just never know in these places. Sneaky, sneaky. Once we hit an open room like this, it pays to be sneaky. Why do I feel like I recall a spot where you fall through the ground in this cave? Maybe not. I mean, good, if not. Okay, so this part. Um, this is going to cause some serious trouble for a lot of people, especially if you don't have very much magic absorption. So do yourself a favor when you get to this part. Go to your status and look at your resistances. My magic resistance is 153, which is okay. That's not a ton, but you know what we want to do? This. Let's definitely boost our magic negation because there's three of those guys. They all throw magic at you hardcore. So we went from... Like 9 to a 23. So that's that's pretty decent. Oi, oi, oi. So, let's be real smart about this. Let's use Misericord. Get that crit. And wait for the attack to be done. Yeah. 
interrupt their attacks just to give ourselves... Here we go. Yeah. There should just be three of them right here. We'll wait for them. And they are in water. So what we want to do... So we want them all to kind of bunch together. Let's do this. Fully charged. Ah, that sucks. There we go. That's what I wanted. So it did not one-shot them, but that's fine. Because now we can essentially run up and kill them with like... I mean, hell, we could pick them off with a crossbow right now if we wanted to. We just have to be strategic about it. Oh, how did you survive another hit? All right. This will not be the case with the crossbow, I promise. <laughs> Don't you guys like this sneaky confessor style play? No. <laughs> nice try. Burn. Hi. Alright. Let's go see what they're regarding while being responsible and picking up our stuff. So don't run in here crazy because there is a two-headed guy over here. Or maybe it's a three even. Uh, I do know that his helmet is different. Those guys all had a singular helmet, right? Like we saw that. Shit, my stuff wore off. That's fine. We're still going to kill this guy in one backstab. But his additional helmets are not just for show. This guy has a higher level of intelligence. Um, his staff looks to be the same to me. But got to watch out. This guy hits significantly harder than the other dudes. Um, his his magic is just worse. Does more damage. Okay, and then down there, we will not proceed that way yet. Let's pick up our bugs. Are you going to come alive? No. Okay, sneaky, sneaky. So I think the reason I want to go this way is because I feel like this way is where it dead ends. Here we go. Alexander? No? Okay. Oh, God. Okay. That there, um, <laughs> just to give you an idea, that there is uh, Battle Mage Hughes, or at least his physical form. That's my favorite Spirit Ash in the game. You're looking at him. Battle Mage Hughes. I call him my bodyguard. That's his nickname because that dude straight soloed everything for me in my first playthrough. Like, if I was having a truly difficult time getting past a certain enemy, I just rang the bell and brought his ass in there and sat down and watched him solo shit. He is unbelievably strong. He does cost like 124 FP, and we don't even have that much yet, but it's worth it. Like, I'm for sure getting that guy, and I'm going to show you how disgustingly strong he is in this playthrough. You will see. More Cuckoo Glintstone. Not our style. We don't have the intelligence or the scaling to make that a super duper useful throwing item, unfortunately, but... We already came from here. Okay. So... Nothing down through any of those directions. Looks like we just have a split in the path up here is all. So instead of heading toward Battle Mage Hughes, I think I want to go the other way. Let's go down this way. And if it's the boss, I will turn around immediately. But doesn't look to be the case. What's going on here? Lock on, don't lie. There's nothing. Strange. What's this? Stone sword key. Yeah. Are you fake? No. All right. Nothing else in here? That's nice and easy. Now we're going to go fight Battle Mage Hughes. Probably get the shit kicked out of us. <laughs> He's strong, I'm telling you. Wait till you see the severe lack of shit that he's going to take from us. We'll see what I mean. Alright, come on, pal. This thing has really good range. Let's see if it shines here. Nope. Okay. So... There we go. Come over here. 
As long as I don't get his attention on the steps, I ain't worried. Don't make me get the ballista out. Are you kidding me? Nope. Oh, come on. Are you serious? Come on, lock on. All right. Thank you. That was troublesome. Okay. I have a feeling that he is not going to care at all about this, but I'm going to try anyway. Uh, okay, it did all right. That attack. That attack hurts. <laughs> Expect to die in damn near one hit if he does that. All right, yep, he does not care. The gavel. Good lord, the gavel. It sucks. Well, oh. thank God for shields. All right, I need to get behind you. And yes, he can chain it. All right, make this easy on me. Thank you. Yeah, that guy. Ooh, we got the staff. Not that we need it, but we got it. That guy will give you trouble. He's not easy at all. Okay, and then there's the boss. So let's head through this way. Let's be nice and sneaky. You never know who's waiting. What's that? I hear them. How did I not see that guy? How do I get up there? Can I like... Can I jump up to him? Eat this. <laughs> it does not look like I can jump up there. That's okay. I don't need to. A rune arc. Nice. Alright. Let's top ourselves off. Why do I feel like you can get up there? Like, it seems like you should be able to. Hold on. Let me spend just, like, a second trying to do this. I mean, he... Is there anything up there? Kind of does look like... Yeah. Weird. Maybe it's through the boss gate? I don't know. No, no, no. Hold on. Let's go back in. Ladies and gentlemen. Hit every wall. Every single one. Because that shit happens. Okay. This is no time to hit every single wall now. <laughs> just for the sake of doing it. But, yeah, the crystal staff. All right, cool. All right, all right, all right. Well, we have to take a look at this thing because I did not get this in my first playthrough. 48 intelligence. Wow, that's a lot. And boosts crystal, crystalline sorcery. Yep, I would think so. Holy shit. All right. Wow. The, uh, the perks of being diligent. New hidden wall that I didn't even know about. All right. Boss time. Here we go. No, you're not going to hit me with that. You try. Come, my children. So they can deal with him. I will deal with this one. Come on. Oh no, that's not fair. Oh, fucking. 
So listen, um... I hope... Damn it. I really need to get rid of this one, like... Fuck. There we go! Fuck. And I missed my critical because of that. Wonderful. Alright. Here, you can have one of these. Oh, that didn't do anything. I fucking aimed for the wrong one. That's why. Alright, I hope they can kind of do, like, some damage. <laughs> oh, god. Alright, you can't be back... Oh, you can be back... Wow! Oh! Alright. Yes, that's what I want. Boom! Alright, how they doing? They're still alive? That's amazing. Alright, daddy's coming. Oh shit. <laughs> He's shut down. No! Oh boy. Nice job, buddy. I find it really cool if one of them is able to survive somehow at the end, because those guys have such little health. So, Crystal Release is a particularly powerful spell. It's the one that you saw them using where I hid behind the pillar to not get struck by. And, uh... Yeah. I don't know particularly how viable it is in PvP, but I do know that in PvE, it is great for large numbers of enemies in front of you that are fanned out in sort of like an expanding geese formation, if you will. It's uh, it's really good for fanned out enemy positions if they don't have a lot of poise. I know that some of like the tougher enemies, like the knights, don't care about that. So, all right, Re Lucaria. So this is the secret way in if you uh, don't have a key. Pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is we're not going to spend too much time in this area because I want to hit the Erd tree. Alright, Terra Magica. So that, um, not important to us at all because we are not an intelligence build, but that is an incredibly important spell for sorcerers that are going for more of like the DPS style. It's, uh essentially like a big giant seal that you cast on the ground and as long as your character is inside the seal your magic damage is increased exponentially so it does leave you wide open but for spells like you know uh comet azure and you know the one that the one that uh the particular the spells that our bodyguard uses like the gavel or the one where he sends the the crystal spirit you that it nukes when it hits the ground spells like that where you want to be stationary it's real good all right so i'm glad we were able to go clear that so uh, that was kind of a short one but we got to be real sneaky we got to have a, a fun play style with that one I'm really enjoying the whole confessor thing. It's a very fun, super satisfying playstyle. It's great. Okay. I'm pretty sure we already hit this island, didn't we? Because we killed the glintstone dragon. And then I think we came up here, right? Yeah, there was a scarab up here. Okay, we chased him off. You would think that they'd be distracting you with the scarab because there'd be like an item up here, but I guess not this time and then over there the octopus woods i like to call it we just want to go grab this grace that's all we're going to do we don't want to mess with the the octopi the octopi forest yee let's see look at that that's just like that's a whole bunch of no that's some bad shit all right oh we already got this one the temple quarter so yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So now, let's head in the direction of the Erd Tree. 
without getting wrecked by octopi. So the first direction that I will go is up here. We want to clear this upper level of thicket. Make sure there's no items to miss. So let's go around here. Kind of check the outskirts a little bit. Okay, what's this? Looks like we have another site of grace. Very nice. Ah, uh, here we go. Another shack. Oh boy. I feel like we're gonna potentially run into a a bell-bearing hunter. Yep. Or, well, maybe not a bell-bearing hunter, but Edgar the Revenger. Shit. Wrath of Gold. Bad news. Okay, that's a storm. So this guy is Arena's father. Oh, come on. Alright, fine. Won't be like that. Yeah, I feel like it really does not, like, matter how good your stability is. This guy doesn't care. He'll eat through you. <laughs> Make sure you have lots of endurance before you try to take this guy down. And we got the Shabriri Grape, as well as the Banished Knight Halberd plus 8. Um, as far as I know... Raw meat dumpling, raw meat dumpling, okay. As far as I know, I don't think that there's anything else to do with him like that might be our last time dealing with that guy but you know what we can do now is well we can pick up our dumplings because i guess it's we're having ourselves a meaty dinner um we can go back to the shabriri grape girl and we can give her that to move her forward which Honestly, before I forget, we should be smart and just do that now. But, my inner adventurer. Are you a misbegotten? Dead misbegottens. Guess he got his hands on these guys. These must have been the ones that killed his daughter. He did say it. Yep, and then what did we learn about the sword that we gave him? It's a revenger's sword. It's all kind of coming together, the story. So, yeah, man, he, like, went Frank Castle on these guys. He shouldn't have killed his daughter. Okay, you. I want to know what you have to say. Ah, the poor fellow, gone perfectly mad. Love, revenge, the frenzied flame melts it all away. I see. Alright, and then up there, that appears to be, yep, this structure right here. Okay, got it. So let me go out into this little uh, stone thing out here. I don't believe we looted the one that was surrounded by the octopi, so let's do that. Aha, uh -huh. tier twos. That's okay. You won't hear any complaints from me. Upgrade stones are upgrade stones. I swear we already went out here. But we're going to go visit it anyway. Just to be damn sure. Because we have time. I think we're doing good on time in this episode right now. Okay. Yep, 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 and then like some of these outskirts right here, we're going to go over there, deal with some of that. Hello. Oh my goodness, it does so well. Damn it. Are you done? You're out of juice. Damn it! <sighs> Come here. Man, these guys want to make it anything but easy. Which, I mean, I feel kind of dumb just for saying that. Like, welcome to From Software. But those guys in particular are kind of annoying. Okay, so this one, I'm pretty sure we should find an interesting helmet here. If I 
if I know what I'm talking about. Okay, the converted tower. Your addition, guide these. So we don't have that gesture, I don't think. We need to get it from... Not that. Let's see, do we have it? No, we have the ring. Yeah, we do not have Iridition yet. But we will. And then once we get it, it's going to make this statue disappear. Or we could cast uh, the Law of Regression. We could do that as well, but we don't have that either. We're not going to have that for a minute. So what I want to do is use Torrent to scale this castle here because I think there should be an item up here. Should be. Ah. Well, <laughs> turns out it's down there. Whatever. <laughs> Anything to make me wrong. Ooh, I do want to go up though. There's some, We didn't go up here for nothing. Let's uh... Yes. Yes, yes. Alright, cool. Hey, big money, big money. No whammy, no whammy, stop. Memory stone, hell yeah. So we can now equip another miracle of our two. Oh, I'm sorry, incantation. These games are in my blood. I mean, at this point, if I'm, if I haven't stopped calling them souls yet, then I likely won't. And I keep calling them in, I keep calling them miracles instead of incantations and just yeah i'm stuck in my ways unfortunately so oh a lovely lyernia drizzle is upon us how nicely it complements the mood okay so now let's head up here i do believe there should be a cave up here no Damn it, Elden Ring. You never spare an opportunity to make me a liar. Okay, fine. Cave, catacomb, sleepy time, flower. Same thing. They're hardly different. Alright. And it's going to be great to get into Ray Lucaria because... We're going to be able to buy our sleepy time bolts. And we're going to have a lot of fun experimenting with those. So, there's a little bit... Jesus, that shadow across the ground, I thought like... Phew, I thought smog was coming to burn Lake Town. Which would make sense. I mean, look at where we are. Damn. Never made that connection till now. That's something that totally deserves to be discussed in the comments. All right, there's a little bit of cleanup involved before you take on this Erdtree avatar because we want to kill these guys 100%. Do not ignore these folks before you aggro the boss. It may not seem like such a problem to have like a couple really weak guys running around while you try to kill this boss, but whatever you can do to improve your chances, that's, uh, that's what I'm trying to teach you here. So... We know what works against this guy, and the talisman that we have just happens to increase our damage for that exact thing that he doesn't like. So I'm going to go take this guy down. I don't think we're even going to run over here, like during this boss fight, but whatever. Just to help. Um, Let's see. Are there any more? Yes, there are. Okay. Let's clean house, just to be responsible. I'm taking your sunflowers. They are mine. Mushrooms. I need more... I need more smoldering butterflies, man. We're kind of hurting for fire pots, and that's not a place I ever want to be in my playthrough. Never. And I could have swore there was one more. I'm almost certain that there's one more bad guy. 
Mm. My eyeballs tell me the coast is clear. It looks pretty safe. Okay. Great. So let's uh, get into position. Let's get our stuff ready. And here we go. Eat that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. And maybe don't get caught on the pots, huh? Okay. You'll never touch me with that. Eat that. Oh, a triple? He almost never does the triple. Alright, and it's not taking very many of these to kill him. That's pretty amazing. Wow. <laughs> Can you say... Sharp cheddar cheese. What tier are we going to get? Okay, the Cerulean Crystal Tier, and then you get the Ruptured Crystal Tier, which is a very unique item. It's uh, the only viable use that I have found for it is severely pissing people off in PvP, especially when you get both tiers of it and stack them together. Well, that's like... What do you call that when that happens in the English language? When there's a double usage of a word happening that applies to both spellings? So, I said if you get both tiers, and I meant that in both senses, as in there's two tiers, because they are called tiers, but I meant T-I-E-R, like there's a second version of this, a higher T-I-E-R tier, and if you use them both on your Flask of Wondrous Physic, it can be absolutely devastating and do disgusting amounts of damage. It's really great. So, alright, we explored the cliffside, and then it cuts back off and just starts going back in the direction of the Everjail and the grace we started at. So now it's time to push a little bit further up. And we just went there. Now it's time to go down into the water, and, well, unfortunately it's not going to be water. We're going to start entering, like, this gross kind of green water territory. And we're going to have to be careful. We're going to have to have our wits about us. Give me whatever it is you dropped. A short bow. Okay, I already have one, but thanks. These guys do not like strike damage. Keep that in mind when you're fighting these dudes. Use something that has blunt force. You know, use the bonk, use a, use a flail, use whatever you want as long as it causes blunt trauma. And yes, I wanted you to imagine that as violently as I tried to make it sound. Like, we don't like these guys, so we are very much destroying them with painful, painful damage. So this stuff, if you stand in it, poison! Yay! <laughs> but good for us, we have torrent. Torrent is uh, a spectral steed. I don't think Torrent exists in the physical plane, per se, even though he can be attacked, which is interesting. Um, okay, fuck these crabs. I'm not interested in the crabs. I just want to make sure that I don't miss any items. And some of them are going to come out of the ground. They're not all on the surface. Ugh, these guys. Screw these guys, man. Okay, more smithing stones. I'll take it. Yes, they come after you like that. They try to grab you. It's stupid. It's just... And they... If you attack them, they create these big clouds of poison. And it's a bad time. It's it's all bad. It's not good. So I wouldn't even... Yep, there we go. Speak of the crab. I wouldn't even try to fight them smith, like simply because of that. Like, they're not worth it. But it's always worth it to pick up your sleepy time flowers. Fine, leave me alone, crab. Okay, and if you must, it's really easy to get away from the crabs in this level. Like, all you have to do is go up on one of these big rock structures, like, suddenly you are out of reach. Um, there's Crystallians over here. We need to deal with them. But first... Um, 
You might be up there, I think. Okay, there's an item I want up here. It is very hard to remember where everything is in this game. I just want to say that. But occasionally I do alright and end up remembering where some of these items are. Here we go. There you are. Okay. That guy. We don't want to lose him. And he's going to go right off the damn cliff. So what I would like to do is try to flank him from the side. Let's do that. Lead him away from the cliff if we can. There we go. Bam. All right. You know me. I love my stones, and I gotta have them. I wonder if there's anything around this cliff. I've never tried to... Nope. That was short-lived. All right. Okay. I think that should be just about everything on this hill. But I think that's about the only good thing up here. Is that... Gentleman drops a stone for us, and then these assholes. Yee. Good thing we have blunt trauma on our side. Okay. I don't recommend... Okay. I thought that was another scarab. I do not recommend trying to fight these guys with torrent. Don't recommend it at all. But they are in water, so I do recommend that. Take advantage of the fact that they're in water. And electrocute the fuck out of them. Alright, come over here. And as we had demonstrated before, the spear guys are a problem because of that. They do that stupid attack where they jump forward. The pogo stick stab. But you can very much easily get through them just by doing this. Block their attack with... Uh, Barricade shield, and suddenly they are no problem at all. I mean, zilch. Like, they won't touch you if you have barricade shield. Yes, that's very cute. And this kind of works for any weapon, to be honest. Like, you, you want to use blunt damage against these guys because... That damage type in particular just completely eradicates them. Like, why wouldn't you? But if you... I understand nobody plays these games the same. No two playthroughs among anybody will be the same in this game because of how expansive and just different it can be for everybody and how many different options you have as far as weapons and builds and playstyle goes. So, without yakking about it, what I'm trying to say is I understand. Not everybody has access to blunt damage and... Well, I mean, hell, maybe you just don't like it. Maybe you don't want to use strike weapons because you don't like the aesthetic, which, look at that thing. What the hell's wrong with you? Um, but, you know, it's not my place to say that. So, I retract that statement. But, uh, what I just showed you very much applies with everything. Like, you can cheese them like that with a slash weapon or a stab weapon, Use what you enjoy using, use what's available to you, and make it work. So now for this part, I guess I should really stop and explain what I'm doing here on the map. So what we're doing is we're kind of like traversing our way up here into the Albanark village, which is this kind of like big chunk of land that I had mentioned before we weren't going to be able to get to until now. But um, this is kind of a confusing area to get to. Like if you look at it geographically on the map, it's... A little bit confusing. I don't know. I, or at least it is for me. It took me a long time to figure out how to find this place. I had to come over here and just explore until I found this hill with these beams of dead guys that you literally can't miss. <laughs> um, yeah. I guess you could say I'm kind of dumb. But it's not as easy as just like, you know, running... Because... It looks like it can be accessed from this distance behind me, right? But if we face this on the map, like if we look in the distance where it looks like, well, oh, we could have just came in from that direction. Not really, because once you get to this point, it's it's a cliff. Like, the lake is kind of a drop down. Like, Torrent can't make that jump, and there's no spirit spring down here that I know of. Uh, there's one down here, like near the Everjail, but, you know, that's it. We are all the way up here, so... 
you very much do have to to get here from uh you have to come up through here and you have to make your way through this crappy water up on this big valley and you have to find the winding hill that goes up on the side here which is where we are now it's a it's a bit strange but that is what you got to do and this is the village of the alvin arcs so these guys um pretty common enemies through here they're pretty easy uh, shit we killed them in one hit we are going to run into one particularly difficult enemy and the boss that we're going to fight is Cake. So here's the NPC that we've been looking for. She looks upset. Oh, it's you. Well, what do you make of it? What's happened to this village? I witnessed a sight much the same in my infancy. The oppression of the weak. Murder and pillage unchecked. A waking nightmare made by men. Hmm. Yeah, those damn men. They should just leave the fighting to us women. But this time, I'm a woman grown. And though the suffering cannot be undone, I can still mete out justice. Justice to the oppressors. Let the scars I carve remind them. I am Nefeli Lu, warrior. But this time, and though the justice to let the scars... Okay, so Nefelia Lu, daughter of Horalu, tarnished who somehow made it to the top and became Elden Lord. All right, so yeah, these guys are laughing. It's kind of weird. It's a little bit unsettling. It's not as unsettling as uh, Joaquin laughing on the train when he killed the three young men in Joker, but it's still kind of unsettling. Yes, have some of that. There we go. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Give me that damage. We got a purple. A larval tear. So this. Uh, we are almost at time on this episode, but we have to take a second to talk about this. This is a pretty significant item. Material needed by Renala to grant rebirth. Now, it's, it's strange that you would pick something up like this in this area, and uh, because it's not going to be relevant until we go into the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, where Renala is. Core of a creature of mimicry known as a silver tear. As much, of a sub as much a substance as it is a living organism. Material required by the Amber Egg, cradled by Renala, Queen of the Full Moon, to birth people anew. Being born anew allows the reallocation of attributes boosted by leveling up. So, this is essentially going to be how you rework your stats through Ranala. And we're going to have to defeat her first to get that. But this item in particular really kind of gives me, like, the Bloodborne vibes a lot. It's, uh, it seems, like, parasitic in nature. It's, like, one of the only items in this game where I look at the picture and it kind of makes my skin crawl. And I think, like... 99% of the items in Bloodborne did that, so... <laughs> and we are going to pick up our mushrooms, of course. We need them. We'll talk to this guy by the Wishing Well. This village is done for. Please, even if it's just you, old Albus, hide well and still your breath. So, that well doesn't go anywhere, as we can see. There's dead people in it. Um, we're going to grab this mushroom. And we're going to grab our grace. And this is a super, super short area. Like, I'm talking, we're going to go just up the hill, deal with this particularly difficult kind of pain in the ass enemy. I think that's him standing right there, as a matter of fact. Yes, that's him, the perfumer. Okay, so I have a specific way of dealing with this guy that will probably be quite useful to a lot of you who either haven't done this area yet or are struggling to beat him. So let me do this. I'm going to rest at the grace because I'm particularly doing this because we exhausted Nephilim's dialogue and we want to rest in order to kind of reset her because she should be available up here to help with the boss. Now, 
I'm going to run across the bridge here first because the way to proceed to get to the boss at the end of this small section is to keep going up the hill. But we don't want to do that. We want to come over here. Now, some of these guys are a little bit different. They're all crawling still, but they shoot magic. So you got to watch out for those guys. And it is just a really weak kind of glenstone pebble, but you still don't want to get hit. And they do blend in. So be vigilant. Okay, Alvinark Blood Clot. It's interesting that Nephilim mentioned that this is all because of pillaging and stuff like that. It's, uh, I guess, some group of people came through here to pillage this area. Okay, we'll deal with that guy. Deal with this guy. And the the name, Albus, that that person mentioned, our spectral friend that we talked to, we're actually going to find him in just a minute. So the crystal sword is the main reason to come over here onto this cliff. There shouldn't be anything else up here. Not to my knowledge. Which, to be fair, can be limited at times. So, never hurts to check. Okay, and the, well, I should probably show it. The crystal sword is a straight sword that scales with intelligence. It's pretty damn cool. It's It's got okay reach. It's, it's about as good as, like, the ornamental straight sword. It's a little bit shorter for a straight sword, but it's good. It does magic damage, and it scales with intelligence, strength, and dexterity. Anything with triple scaling, no matter how low the letters are, does tend to get you better damage, so... Consider that if you're an intelligence build that doesn't mind getting up close and dirty. So, here's what I do with this guy. I prefer to sneak up on him. I don't know that the lantern will or will not give me away with this guy. I don't know if he can see light. I know he can hear sound, but I just like to sneak around here and backstab the fuck out of this guy. Do not let him cause you any trouble. Like... He's bad news. Once he starts getting, like, the fire powder out and stuff like that, that's when you know that it's about to get rough. So, don't even let him. Okay, and then we have another bridge that we need to go across to get to the boss, and we have a scarab over there. But I'm going to get rid of some of these bad guys over here. I know there's this guy hiding around the corner. Get rid of him. I really shouldn't be calling them bad guys. Like, these guys drop Albanark blood clots, so they should theoretically be Albanarks. It's their village. They were attacked. Okay, and we'll get this ivory sickle. Let me check this thing out real quick. Take a look at it. Where is it? Here we go. Dagger. Very interesting. Sickle fashioned from ivory, weapon carried by aged Albanarks. These weapons are evidence of their dedication to the Howl Tree despite never having entered its presence. So weird, they've never been there, but they're dedicated to it. Like, I guess it might be like a kind of religion for them. And then you have this really awkward looking pot. I don't recommend attacking it, I recommend rolling into it. Please no, dear me. I haven't a clue. No secrets lie with me, not a one. Oh, please leave me be. So, this here is an Albanaric. You'll notice he looks exactly like the other enemies that we've been fighting, and I can certainly imagine a lot of people accidentally killing him on their playthrough because they either hit the pot and they go, oh, it's another one of these guys, and they just keep swinging until he dies, and he has, like, no health. You can kill him in, like, one hit if you're high enough damage. But this guy is going to give us the first half of our second medallion, being the secret one. Wait, then. You're not one of them. Well, what a relief. <laughs> oh, goodness me. I am Albus and Albinoric, as you can see. We're finished. The whole village is finished. The curse mongers have destroyed everything. No one that remains has their wits about them. I beg you. Would you look after this medallion? You must keep it out of the Cursemonger's hands. And there it is. And if you should meet the young Albinoric Latena, 
Then please give it to her. All right. So, Latena is actually... Where did we find her? Oh, she's somewhere over here. She was in one of the caves. Um... You guys know who I'm talking about, though. I think I'm pretty sure it's... There we go. Latena the Albanaric. So that's exactly who he's talking about. We'll take this there. We'll get the other half of the medallion, and we can get her as a spirit summon. A chosen land awaits us, Albanaric. The medallion is the key that leads to the city. It's only a quaint treasure for we who cannot make the journey. But for dear Latena, it is needed to fulfill her purpose. Okay. My legs will soon fade, and with them my life. Alas, this is the immovable fate of all Albinorex. <laughs> And there he goes. How many runes are you going to drop? None? Wow. Screw you, man. Alright, so... We learned quite a bit from that dialogue, and I'll review it as we smash through this stone bridge of Hemdem f shooting flaming arrows. <laughs> Good lord. Nope. Alright. Maybe we should just do this. Not that I really need this scarab either, but... I mean, I just want as many flasks as I can get. And we'll deal with these... Jagaloons in the meantime. Alright, so... Let's go over what he said real quick. That guy mentioned... The, the curse mongers is what he called them. I'm pretty sure that's what this boss is here. Like he's referring to the curse monger. That is this jerk, and this is a super easy boss. He looks, and these bosses are actually called uh, something eaters. I can't remember what they're called. They're pretty easy though. Like you can guard counter them. They'll bounce off your shield if you have shield barricade. It's like these are essentially like Elden Ring's capper demons is kind of how I treat them. And we have Nephili here. So we're going to summon her particularly because I'm kind of going over time on this episode. And she'll help us kill this thing faster. But do not for any reason rush down there and start fighting that... Uh, that boss because there are dogs down here and they will come in and ruin your day very similar to what the capper demon will do so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna be smart about this let's use oh boy we're gonna have to aim looks like i don't have very many crossbow arrows left so we're probably gonna have to like not be super stupid and miss like that? Jeez. All right. Oh, I picked up some bolts. Good. So let's do this. Yes. All right. We have to get rid of these dogs because I don't care if you have Nephili with you or not. The dogs suck. They will cause a lot of problem for you. Yes. I'm looking at you, man. Come up here. Yeah, that's it. How the fuck are you alive? Wow. You gotta switch to something fast to take care of that guy. The flail probably wouldn't cut it. So there's more down here. There's one laying down right there. Or that may be the one I just killed. But no, he's not. That one is in fact going to come alive down there. So be wary. Um, I'm going to try to be a little sneaky here. I don't think that thing will aggro. The boss should not aggro until you get a little bit closer. I don't know if Nephili will change that, unfortunately. Nope. 
No? Okay. I guess that's just a dead dog. <laughs> Not bad. Let me get this guy. And then there should be, I think, two more dogs. There we go. Here's one. Come on. And we use our camera swivel ability that we learned. Let's see what's over here. There shouldn't be anything over there, really. So the only thing left, there should be a dog that's near the boss. But since I have Nephilim with me, I'm not too worried about it. We should be okay. But I'm going to roast this guy with a lightning spear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this guy is pretty weak to lightning. Yeah, lightning staggers him pretty hard. And they can also be backstabbed. And we're posted, which is nice. Alright, that was pretty quick. And you'll notice that uh, Nephili can use storm-type weapon arts with electricity or lightning. That's pretty cool. So we got the Crucible Knot Talisman. And then there's that other dog I was talking about. That's why it's always better to pull the boss towards you. Because then you don't have to worry about aggroing this dog. And it's a big dog. Alright. So that's done. Do not worry about trying to platform on these things. There's no item up there. There's no item in the tree. There's nothing waiting for you. So the only thing we're going to do is, and you can kind of like scale down right here. Like it does look kind of like suicide, but believe it or not, if you use torrent, you can scale down right here and get back down to the water if you want. Don't know why you would, because the stuff that you want to loot is going to be... Well, I think we got it, actually. I think we got the only item that's worth looting. Let me jump on this roof just to make sure. Do a little bit of scaling. And, okay, yeah, like I said, I don't think you need to jump up on that roof for any reason and get on those planks. I tried. It was a waste of time. I was very pissed off about it. Um, all right. Let's see if there's anything behind it, shall we? Nothing. All right. So now, the only thing we need to do is, I think that's basically all of it. That is that is literally all of Lyernia, except for two of the four Belfries up there that we need to try to cover. Is there any item hiding in the fire? Smoldering butterflies. Anything. I'll take it. Guess not. Okay. Just want to be thorough. So that is... All of that. So now let's go back here. Let's see if she has anything to say. Because she's going to be in the same spot. Nephili. Uh, weirdos. Huh? Okay. Nope. She's gone. Alright. That means she has moved so now what we're going to do to finish this episode is we're going to go back to the round table hold we're going to have ourselves an interesting conflict with the edgelord hello there Sorry, Edgelord. Sucks to suck. And then you get the Clinging Bone, which is a fist weapon. It's arcane scaling. And, uh, where is it? Here we go. Pokey Stick. It's a dexterity arcane weapon. Not very good reach, but it does have Lifesteal Fist, which is essentially like what the Dark Wraiths would use in Dark Souls. And, uh, I don't know. I don't think it's very good. It's not very viable. But, okay. That 
is a great place to end. We have finally destroyed <laughs> the Edgelord, who was just simply too cool to talk to us. And uh, I think we covered a lot of ground today. That was a solid episode. We got ourselves the Glintstone Key, so we can now get into the Rayo Lucaria Academy. And uh, you can go and give it to the bald guy that was asking for a book. But don't. Don't do that. Use it for yourself so you can progress in the game. And uh, we we beat another Erdtree Avatar, so we have more Cerulean Tears to play around. Um, Flask of Physique Tears to play around with. Uh, we got the secret way into Rey Lucaria to go get that sorcery that was up above. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Once we do Rey Lucaria, that'll be literally everything in Lyurnia of the Lakes. Except for the remaining two belfries. Which we're going to have to go into other parts of the game to go get those special keys needed to take those teleporters. So not like we can do it anyway. Um, but alright. Looks like in the next episode, we're going to be heading into Ray Lucaria, and that, well, now that I think about it, we have this doozy up here. Looks like we're not doing Ray Lucaria yet. We need to do the Carrion Manor. That is a lot of fun. I enjoy the Carrion Manor quite a bit. It's got some serious pain in the ass enemies that will scare the shit out of you, and they're really hard to kill, but it's great. It's a lot of fun. So, we're actually going to head there next time. So... Thank you guys so much for joining me on episode 30 of the in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. I've been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.